everybody, Alex here. Welcome to my finance and accounting education channel. Today we are going to talk again about the cryptocurrencies. I mean, I have like news, some new events that happened in the meantime. Uh, namely, there are two articles from CNBC. Uh, once again, two inter very interesting topics. Uh, first is the opinion of a Nobel Prize winner about the cryptocurrencies. Uh, let's just say that I have similar uh, views which I have presented um, a long time ago and in several videos to you here on YouTube as well about cryptocurrencies and then there is another uh, article about some 320 million dollars theft again some money has just evaporated in this supposedly super safe environment which is offered by the blockchains and so on and so forth uh, but before we jump right in and we, we enjoy ourselves about this crypto world i mean it's very if you are if you are positioning uh, yourself outside the the entire universe of crypto so-called investors actually speculators or gamblers uh, you can laugh about uh, the news and what's actually happening if especially if you understand very well uh, what's going on and you can have a lot of fun by reading these uh, articles and they are just um, let's say um, an argument that is coming after another argument and so on and so forth in order to 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 somehow solidify your your views if they are the normal views and you do not really think uh, you don't have some weird or crazy expectations about these cryptocurrencies uh, but before we jump right in i'm going to ask you to subscribe to my channel to hit the bell notification button and you will never miss an update of my site i do them quite regularly these days you should expect new and hopefully video and hopefully interesting videos from me on Tuesdays, Thursdays and Sundays as well. Uh, and that being said, let's uh, jump right in. So we have the Nobel laureate Paul Krugman says crypto has disturbing parallels with subprime mortgage meltdown. Actually, uh, and I'm linking right now a video, uh, this parallel with subprime mortgage, it's kind of eluding me. We will see what he's uh, talking about. I said from my point of view, it has a lot of parallels with the dot-com bubble actually because might ask yourself why dot-com bubble uh, it was the same tech oriented um, let's say the all the, the arguments were also in the this tech uh, direction that uh, let's say the, the invest the, the classical investors the investment community doesn't understand the uh, the dot-com companies because they are new and they are tech and uh, you know they don't need to have revenues they don't need to have profits you just need to blindly invest in them because they will do something in the future and they are the future and so on and so forth and somehow this parallel with the with the um, uh, dot com bubble is more more handy for for myself because i see the the, the same kind of arguments uh, going on with cryptos right now that you don't understand you don't understand technology you don't understand blockchain you don't understand the problems that the cryptocurrencies are trying to solve and so on and so forth and i'm just saying like okay it doesn't really matter what uh, it's written in the white papers what the creators of these cryptocurrencies are supposedly trying to solve and so on and so forth i see what's in front of me and just as if i come to you with the with a company that has no revenues and no profits and doesn't promise to deliver any and there is nothing if the company has in his in its strategy or wherever in the mission statement uh, something great written you will probably not you would say that it's a joke and you would not invest in a company that it's not delivering anything uh, so it's basically the same thing with the cryptocurrencies i see what's in front of me and not what the good intentions might be of the creators, what they are trying to solve and all these um, things that are not really that relevant because as you see that their problems are not my problems and if I'm looking at these cryptocurrencies as investment opportunities, as digital assets, as assets, then I need to, to judge them unfortunately for the crypto fans through classical, uh, let's say, uh, criteria. But going to the article, so there are disturbing echoes of the subprime crash in the cryptocurrency market, Nobel Prize winning economist Paul Krugman says. Krugman argues crypto investors are being sold speculative financial products without truly understanding the risk involved. Uh, I don't, I wouldn't even call them financial products. I mean, they are just things. Bitcoin and the other digital currencies have dropped sharply in recent weeks. Okay, now they are back, 40,000 plus. 
dollars. Nobel Prize winning economist Paul Hagman uh, has given an ominous uh, warning about the volatile cryptocurrency market comparing it to the subprime mortgage crisis in the late uh, 2000. It's an opinion piece for the New York Times on Thursday, Krugman said, seeing uncomfortable parallels between crypto and the US subprime crash, uh, which brought the whole housing market to its knees and triggered the 2007-2008 global financial crisis. There are disturbing echoes of the subprime crash 15 years ago, Krugman says in the piece. The subprime crisis was essentially the result of banking making loans out to people of higher risk at a time when interest rates were low and house prices were soaring. Once the market became saturated, homeowners found themselves in negative equity, unable to repay the, their loans, resulting in hefty losses for lenders. Krugman argues crypto investors are similarly being sold speculative financial products without truly understanding the risks involved. It's worth noting Krugman is a known Bitcoin bear, having previously uh, likened the cryptocurrency to a Ponzi scheme. Linking a video right now, I have also said that the, the cryptocurrencies are Ponzi schemes, no matter how you, you look at them. Um, the early investors are benefiting from the later investors throwing their money in the scheme and that's it. So there is no fundamental behind, there is no company selling things, producing profit, developing, gaining market share and so on and so forth. So there is absolutely no comparison with anything that is in the market. Um, it looks like a Ponzi scheme, you know, it's, it's, it works like a Ponzi scheme, it works like a Ponzi scheme, then it must be a Ponzi scheme. So. Yeah, even if you are if you are thinking there are some parallels with the gold, and I have explained also several times why that I don't think the cryptocurrencies are anyway uh, close to gold. If if you take gold and you say okay, the value of gold today is zero, you can still use gold for jewelry, art objects. Um, okay, I don't know if it's still used in the in the dental medicine or something like that, but it's still used in the electronic industry. You have you have gold in your mobile phones and like small pieces of gold and in the security and so, so on and so forth. So it has, you can use it somehow else. Yeah, the, the gold, if it has zero value uh, with the cryptocurrencies, good luck with doing something else with them than when they reach, if they reach, let's say, zero value. Many borrowers didn't understand what they were getting into, he said in the New York Times op-ed. Any cryptocurrencies with their huge price fluctuations seemingly unrelated to fundamentals. Which fundamentals? There, there are no fundamentals behind cryptocurrencies. Are about as risky as an asset class can get. The Nobel laureate isn't convinced cryptocurrencies pose a systemic risk. With this I agree that they are not, not yet systemic risk because the you know, banks are not really involved and so on and so forth. Um, however, the numbers aren't big enough to do that. The entire crypto market is worth roughly 1.7 trillion according to CoinGecko data. Bitcoin and other digital currencies have dropped sharply in the recent weeks. At a price of just over $37, the world's top coin is currently around 46% of its number record high of nearly $69,000. At the peak, the whole crypto market was worth a combined 3 trillion. Okay, and then we have the, the second article, more than 320 million stolen in latest apparent crypto hack. Warhol, one of the most popular bridges linking the Ethereum and Solana blockchain. It, it's, for me, it's a surprise how many companies are involved in this and somehow they find financing and the people are throwing with money either uh, as so-called investors, but in, in startups and in IPOs and that's actually the problem that when the things will start um, tumbling down probably there will be also people that will lose jobs and because they are involved in these companies in this decentralized finance in exchanges and you will see that it's an entire universe which was created um, one of the most popular bridges linking the ethereum and solana blockchains lost about 320 million in apparent hack was the afternoon so the difference we have Bitcoin, which is, uh, I'm trying now to, to, uh, to be accurate, it's using proof of work. Uh, Bitcoin is not very efficient from energy point of view and so on. Then Ethereum came and said, okay, we are going to, prove, to use proof of stake uh, as, as a, let's say, how to prove that the transactions actually happened and so on and so forth. And then there, there came Solana, which is using something which is called proof of time. So they have this technical, uh, different technical approaches of how to validate transactions within the blockchain. Uh, but you see lost about 320 million in apparent hack Wednesday afternoon. 
The two blockchains are popular in the world of decentralized finance where programmable contracts can replace lawyers and bankers in some transactions and NFTs. But few users stick with one blockchain exclusively, so bridges like uh, Wormhole are a necessary go-between. One of the most popular bridges linking the Ethereum and Solana blockchains lost more than $320 million Wednesday afternoon a parent hack. Now, if I were 100% cynical, and I've seen people that are saying this, and I can understand their approach, but I don't agree 100% with them, uh, they will tell you that, okay, they didn't have that money anyway, and it was just an illusion that they had 320 million and they lost basically nothing. Uh, but then you would be thinking like that, like, for example, somebody that bought Bitcoin, it's not the case here, it's about Ethereum and Solana, but let's say, let's take the Bitcoin because it's the most popular and most well-known. You bought Bitcoin with $1, 20 pieces, let's say, with $20, and then you lost them and you say, okay, it, he didn't really lost 20 times 60,000 or something, he actually lost only $20, so it's not a big deal. But when you think about it, and I've also presented a lot of articles that people lost their life savings, and there were people that bought Bitcoin at, I don't know, $40,000, at $45,000, at $50,000, at $55,000, at $60,000, $65,000, and so on and so forth. Otherwise, it wouldn't have reached that price of $69,000. So it's obviously that not everybody is losing um, illusion money. Some are losing a lot of real money that they put into the, in this system, hoping for quick returns. In It's uh, uh, this around decentralized time is second biggest exploit ever just after the 600 million poly network crypto heist and it is the largest attack to date on Solana a rival to Ethereum that is increasingly gaining traction in the non-fungible token NFT and decentralized finance ecosystems. Ethereum is the most used blockchain network and it's a big player in the world of decentralized finance in which programmable pieces of code known as smart contracts can replace middlemen like banks and lawyers in certain types of business transactions. A more recently introduced competitor Solana is growing in popularity because it is cheaper and faster to use than Ethereum. Crypto holders often do not operate exclusively within one blockchain ecosystem, so developers, yeah, it's because usually each cryptocurrency has its own blockchain system. So developers have built cross-chain bridges to let users send cryptocurrency from one chain to another. Wormhole is a protocol that lets users move their tokens and NFTs between Solana and Ethereum. So check this out, this, we are not going to see this video, but crypto in the skyrockets 2021, what it says, 3.2 billion stolen cryptocurrency, 516% uh, uh, up from 2020, so that's in 2021, and 72% stolen from DeFi platforms. Yeah. So developers representing Warhol confirmed the exploit on its Twitter account saying that the network is down for maintenance while it looks into a potential exploit. The protocol's official website is currently offline. An analyst from blockchain cybersecurity firm Certic, so you see, there is a blockchain cybersecurity film. I mean, <laughs> it's laughable. Shows that the attackers' profits thus far are at least $251 million worth of Ethereum, nearly 74, uh, 47 million in Solana, and more than 4 million in USDC, a stablecoin pegged to the price of the US dollar. Bridges like Wormhole work by having two smart contracts, one of each. Uh, one on each chain, according to Austin Bouncer, a co founder of Quick Note, which provides blockchain infrastructure to developers and companies. In this case, there was a one smart contract on Solana and one on Ethereum. A bridge like Wormhole uh, takes an Ethereum token, locks it into a contract on one chain, and then on the, uh, on the chain at the other side of the bridge, it issues a parallel token. Preliminary analysis from Certic uh, shows that the attacker exploited the vulnerability on Solana side of the Wormhole bridge to create 120,000 so-called wrapped Ethereum tokens for themselves. Wrapped Ethereum tokens are pegged to the value of the original coin but are interoperable with the other blockchains. It appears that they, uh, they then use these tokens to claim Ethereum that was held on the Ethereum side of the bridge. Prior to the exploit, the bridge held a one-to-one -one ratio of Ethereum to wrapped Ethereum and the Solana blockchain acting essentially as an escrow service, according to Chetik. This exploit breaks the 1.1 uh, to 1 peg, as there is now at least 93,750 less Ethereum held as collateral, continued the report. Wormhole says the Ethereum will be added to the bridge over the next hours to ensure that its red uh, Ethereum tokens remain back, but it is unclear where it's getting the funds to do this. We also had this discussion previously that we don't know if they have insurance for, for these kind of things, 
uh, or they have uh, uh, own funds to, to cover for all these thefts and all these scams and so on and so forth. Uh, and it's not only valid for wormhole, but all for all the others that we have presented. I think we talked about, uh, I'm trying to not to forget any, we talked about Bitmart, we talked about um, Compound and so on and so forth. Ethereum founder Vitalik Buterin previously made the case that bridges won't be around much longer in the crypto ecosystem in part because there are fundamental limits to the security of bridges that hope across multiple zones of sovereignty. Okay. Before that, we see $320 million <laughs> stolen. Chetik noted in its post-mortem report of the incident that when bridges hold hundreds of millions of dollars of assets in escrow and multiply uh, their possible vectors of attack by operating across two or more blockchains, they become prime targets for hackers. Crypto platforms have faced a number of high value exploits in recent months. The 320 million uh, hack on Warhol Bridge highlights the growing trend of attacks against blockchain protocols, said Setik, co founder Rong Wigu. This attack is sounding the alarms of growing concern around security on the blockchain. Yeah, so you are being told. That's one of the one of the stories which is coming all the time. That the blockchain is safe and basically there is no way that you can lose your money and so on and so forth. And there are like I don't know on this channel how many examples I gave you and uh, how many news we have seen in which the money simply gets stolen. Yeah, and it's clear that um because of the way they, it's built it's it's very popular between hackers and they can get away with it very easily and sometimes it happens that they return the money but that those are the rare uh, cases uh, most of the times we don't know what's going on and uh, if the people that put sometimes maybe their entire life savings in this behind these cryptocurrencies uh, will ever get something um, back from the hacks or steals or whatever uh, these, these events, unwanted events are. Um, so that would be it for today. If you like this video, click the like button. If you want to comment or add something on the topic, please uh, comment in the comment section. Um, share it with somebody that might be interested about the cryptocurrencies. Mainly I'm doing the this debunking work, work with, with cryptocurrencies because um, you will often get from news and media just the, the pumping of the subject, uh, the, the positive, uh, let's say, advertisements. You will just be presented with uh, millionaires, uh, with a lot of people that they are not that many actually, but uh, they, you will be told that there are a lot of people that are getting rich with cryptocurrencies and you should also invest. And uh, by presenting such topics, I'm, I think I'm doing you a service by, because I'm raising your awareness that this is not really investing. It's more in the area of speculation, of gambling, and you should be aware that you risk potentially losing your, your life savings um, very easily if you put your money behind the cryptocurrencies, no, mat no matter which cryptocurrency, in, in which blockchain, and on which... Uh, exchange and which decentralized finance you are using and so on and so forth um, once again uh, uh, and uh, also besides uh, this you have links uh, under this video you can create an eToro account and trade their CFDs so you won't actually own the own the shares but you will own, own uh, instruments which are similar to the shares so they mirror the shares and you can trade their uh, CFDs without a commission or a fee uh, which is always a saving uh, no matter how often you are doing, if you are doing it on a daily basis or once per month or per year, uh, not paying a commissioner fee is always a saving. Um, also, you have an Amazon wish list with the uh, hardware and software items which can help me improve the quality of my videos, thus being beneficial also for you. But let's just say from financial perspective, that is the most inconvenient. Uh, the easiest way for you to support me is to subscribe to my channel, to hit the bell notification button and of course to continue to watch my videos. Uh, I hope they are um, very uh, uh, educational for you, so they are bringing you a lot of added value. Um, once again, my name is Alex Petrescu. Thank you for your time and patience uh, today here on my uh, YouTube Finance and Accounting Education channel, and I look forward to presenting to you with the next opportunity. Goodbye!